Lots of hype surrounding GTA 6 is occurring again because of the recent update to GTA Online and the possibility of a new trailer any month now, Rockstar. Hell, it's been seven months since the first trailer and we've been dying for some more info ever since. With the excitement, of course, comes a lot of negativity as well. People can't believe the game will look this good, pissed about 30 FPS, the release being console only, etc. I myself only really see two major concerns for GTA 6 and GTA 6 Online. That, of course, being the cheating slash modding problem over on PC GTA Online and microtransactions, which affects everyone in online. Now we'll focus on the microtransactions today, but I'd love to give my two cents on the modder problem if you guys would like to see a separate video on the topic. GT Online changed gaming industry standards since its launch back in 2013, and Rockstar once again has the opportunity to change the gaming industry with the launch of GTA 6 Online for better or for worse. But to understand how they changed the industry, we have to go back to where it all started back in 2013. Think of some of your favorite games around that time, 2012-2013, Far Cry 3, Borderlands 2, Black Ops 2, Bioshock, Battlefield 4, COD Ghosts, etc. There are many more examples of course, but all these games have one thing in common, paid DLC. Don't get me wrong, it still happens today, all of the time. Take Call of Duty for example, you don't have to pay for maps or guns anymore, all because of the ballsy move Rockstar made back in 2013 that changed the gaming industry standard. November 19th, 2013 was the day the Beach Bum update dropped for GT Online and single player for exactly zero dollars. It was completely free. Back then it was very uncommon to release DLC without a dollar amount. Back then and even now the word DLC received a groan from everyone. It was a dirty word that got gamers to open their wallets so they could continue playing their favorite games. Rockstar of course had their shark cards where players could purchase for a boost of in-game currency. We all know about them at this point but it was easily overlooked as you could have always made the money on your own. Shark cards were a shortcut if you didn't have the time to play or just wanted to skip out on the actual grinding to check out some of the new stuff. But ever since Rockstar's free updates, games have slowly been changing to that standard as well. No longer do we have to pay for guns or maps on Call of Duty or Battlefield, for example, and many other games. There are still many games that you have to pay for new content like Elden Ring, which has got nothing but praise but nonetheless, gaming was changed forever with that decision Rockstar made back in November of 2013 with the Beach Bum update. Before we reach the modern day, however, there is one more thing I'd like to mention. Fortnite. Fortnite, though free to play for everyone, perfected the new modern gaming dirty word, live service. Their model is simple. The game gets constant updates because the developers can't go home until they've worked their fair share of an 80 to 100 hour weeks to keep the game fresh and exciting. How they make their money is through cosmetic transactions and skins and a battle pass, which does not affect the gameplay. Whether you're a fan of Fortnite or not, the map changing, different cars, different weapons being implemented into the battle royale game can definitely keep things exciting or incredibly frustrating. Fortnite's free-to-play aspect with their live service model definitely became mainstream because of it. But I think Rockstar and GTA 5 really got the ball rolling back in 2013. This live service model has completely taken over. Yeah, Call of Duty doesn't make you pay for the maps anymore, but you better be sure when that juicy Nicki Minaj is in the store. <laughs> Sorry, where was I? Oh yeah, and get the new guns early, which of course will be the new meta, and you'll want to get your hands on ASAP. Fear is how companies make their money with this live service model, putting something new and exciting in their game that you can get earlier with a credit card, or you could possibly miss out on it completely. Overpriced cars and weaponized aircrafts that would take you days to earn, or a simple purchase of a shark card. It's almost like Rockstar saw into the future that they were somehow ahead of their times and protected this predatory practice all those years ago. What Rockstar was once praised for is now what people hate most about them and we haven't gotten even started with GTA+. Plus. The Oppressor Mark II is a perfect example of one of the very overpriced vehicles in the game. Up until summer of 2022, you had to do all your businesses in public lobbies, which would mean there would be some little children on their little flying motorcycles that would come and murder you immediately once they saw your little tiny blip on the map. They're kind of like bulls, it's not their fault, when they see red, they just 
dive headfirst into it. It's not their fault, but of course they've been given that option and liberty through the Oppressor Mark II. A lot of people, like myself, were grinding for this Oppressor Mark II because of how overpowered and convenient it was to fly around on the map on a little flying broomstick. It would take you days or even weeks, depending on how much time you're putting into the game and effort, to earn this vehicle, or you could just pull out your credit card and, oh, what's that? Oh, it's conveniently priced at $100 for a shark card, and you can just get the Oppressor Mark II right now. Rockstar has released some live service already in Red Dead Online. The Battle Pass, of course, was free to earn, or you could pull out your credit card and buy the gold to earn the Battle Pass immediately. The Battle Pass would give you a bunch of cosmetics, ammo, materials for crafting, etc. Fear, though, was used as these really cool and unique outfits would go away and be unobtainable, or so it seemed at the time. You can now go and get these special outfits for Arthur's unique outfit as well as John Marston's unique outfit for 52 gold bars each which is equivalent to 40 to 50 dollars. Red Dead Online took some scary steps into the live service gaming world. Gold, for example, was the second currency in game that would earn you businesses, which was hard to get your hands on until you had, of course, businesses. It was an absolute pain to get gold at first, but of course you could just pull out the credit card and buy some. Even if you make one purchase of gold to get started, the damage has already been done. You paid an extra 10, 15 bucks on top of the already 60 to 70 dollars you spent on the game. This exists everywhere now and is the new standard. Give players new things to earn with the fear of missing out. Which of course segues into the most recent predatory practices from Rockstar. GTA Plus shortly after the long awaited GTA 5 next, next gen upgrade on March 29th, 2022. I actually have a live reaction of Zyron and I when we heard about GTA Plus the day it came out. I don't criticize Rockstar often, but what the fuck did you just think? Or what the fuck were you thinking? What is Rockstar thinking? This better stay off PC. Don't want this garbage. This move is so unexpected. I can honestly say the same. I didn't fucking see this no. coming. Took them two years to not only make zero new content for their new expanded and enhanced game, except for a couple cars, which isn't new. The paint jobs could have been added in. What the fuck? Genuinely, what the fuck? At first at its release, Rockstar was only hiding certain clothes and cosmetics behind their new subscription-based paywall, that of course being GTA Plus, which has since become cars, money bonuses, properties, and even gameplay features. The recent GTA Plus updates allow players to obtain their safe money through an app on their phone. Shark cards were already bad enough, but hiding gameplay features behind a subscription? Oh, how the mighty have fallen. More eyes are on Rockstar now more than ever before, with GTA 6 hopefully releasing late next year. Now you're probably thinking, Jaco, where are you going with this? Should we be scared or hopeful of GTA 6 online? After all this, Rockstar does have a chance to redeem themselves, and there is a glimmer of hope. Some games like Helldivers 2 made the term live service not so dirty. They allow all their battle passes to be earned or bought, but best of all, there's no time limit on their battle passes. There's no fear of missing out. You can take your time and play the game casually and earn it down the road. In fact, I like the idea of having that to look forward to without all the pressure. Most battle passes give you like 30, 40 days to complete and hope you feel pressured enough to throw a few bucks their way to finish it. But not Helldivers 2. They're one example that the live service model does not have to be scary, and I think Rockstar has the opportunity to either ruin their reputation or once again be praised for breaking barriers. I think there's two paths. One bad microtransaction riddled path, and the good path. Stick with me here and have some goddamn faith, alright? The bad path they could go down would be, of course, continuing what they're doing. Adding second or third currencies that are, are hard or impossible to obtain unless you start your first businesses or a credit card, hiding more gameplay features and content behind your subscription service, hiding content behind battle passes that are time-based, and making the economy stupidly overpriced like it is now. Those are a few icky live service practices that are more or less happening already. That of course if you mix both GTA and Red Dead Online. 
or they could go on the path of redemption, leave their subscription little idiot of a service to only cosmetic items, have battle passes that aren't time-based, and be earned for free at any time, balance the economy and payouts for all content, and get rid of that dumbass gold and capitale idea and fucking burn it. Make the microtransactions completely avoidable for the average casual player and keep the fun things affordable. All while keeping the game live service and giving us content updates and roadmaps for what's to come. To keep us excited and a little bit more motivated during our grind. I want Rockstar to change the standard for live service titles. Waiting six months for GTA Online updates like we do right now just ain't gonna cut it. Rockstar knows GTA 6 Online will be their moneymaker and needs to keep it fresh and updated constantly without the fear of most live service games out there. We should all want GTA 6 to be live service, just not the current industry's live service. At the end of the day, I will be playing this game no matter what. As many of you will too. The game, regardless of the microtransactions or not, will still be amazing. My friends and I have already talked about calling off work or school once the GTA 6 Online actually comes out years in advance. We've been talking about this for years. The game is still very far away, but it'll be over before you know it. I hope wherever I'm at in life, I'll have the time and means to play this game from my favorite series of all time. And of course, make content on it. I will be grinding the absolute hell out of this game and losing sleep, I guarantee that. I hope no matter the microtransactions that I'll be able to enjoy this game and mess around with my friends in a whole new map and sandbox. The term live service doesn't have to be scary, I just wanted to give you guys all the facts about what direction Rockstar is really going with their microtransactions and whether or not you should be worried. I don't think you should be worried, depending on how much you'll play the game of course, which we will have to wait and find out. Now if you're a huge grinder, then I don't think you have anything to worry about, but if you have other live service games, like if you play an NBA 2K and a Call of Duty, and you now have three live service games you have to juggle between job and school and family and all that, then you're gonna miss out on some things. And if you're okay with that, then you're okay with that. Who cares? I mean, at the end of the day, this is just a game. If you miss out on uh, a few hats or glasses or something, who cares? You'll still be able to enjoy the hell out of this game, as will I. And I hope it's just not too much content that actually affects gameplay, like cars or planes. I would hate to miss out on a really cool and big, fun cargo plane that all my friends and I can get in the back of. Now, if it's a livery or something, big whoop. I don't really care, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna be robbing banks regardless and having an absolute blast. So regardless of what this video made you feel, with all of the facts, I hope that you're still excited, as am I. And of course, I would love to hear what you guys think about this video, microtransactions, and of course, let me know some other topics that you would like me to cover. Like I said in the intro, I'd love to cover some of the cheating and modding issues that may also occur in GTA 6. I also got some pretty awesome GTA 6 concept ideas that I would like to share as well, like how Rockstar could implement heist roles and how that may or may not work. So let me know if you guys would like to hear that as well. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you are new, consider subscribing. And in the meantime, check out these videos here on screen, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Pew.